Hey everybody, welcome to G4G here on YouTube. Today we are in a unreleased Marvel game called Marvel Battle Lines. This is a game you can pre-register for at least on the Google Play Store, potentially also on the Apple Store. And it's going to be coming out who knows when, but it's a very interesting game. So I've covered it once on the channel and I'm bringing it back again because I've leveled up quite a bit in the game so far and it's received some major updates the last time I logged into the game a few days ago the game had definitely changed quite a bit so as we're jumping in you have a monthly and you have a weekly login bonus so that is gold coins and over here I'm getting gold too and you also have tickets and diamonds which are the premium currency so you can see here it's pretty even balance of tickets and gold with the seventh day of every week giving you some diamonds this is not a unheard of routine um, DC Legends has one similar to this where you get gems uh, every six or seven days and then the rest of the week is more minor stuff so this is what the game looks like now. It, it actually has a map of a city to do your different things. Whereas previously it had been a list. Now you actually get a little bit of a map. Um, I think this implementation is okay. It would be kind of nice if maybe you had the ability to change how you had the list. If you had it list mode or... Uh, map mode over here because this is a reasonable amount of swiping and I would say if you had this on a phone that was a little bit smaller um, that might get a little obnoxious but it, it's not too bad um, the list was just really nice and concise over here so we'll work from the top down you've got a friends area where you can go ahead and add friends you would need to know the player name to find them. Unlike some games of the type, it doesn't seem to kind of suggest to you a few friends. I like ones that do that because if you really don't have people that you know that play the game, it's an easy way to get started with friends. If you want to compare it to Marvel Avengers Alliance in MAA, they actually had to be your Facebook friend before you could add them as a game friend. And... I totally admit I had two different opinions on that. Originally, I was like, man, I don't want all these crazy strangers being my friends on Facebook and being all up in the shit and seeing stuff and everything like that. That's just going to be a little bit weird. Maybe I'll all just put them in a restricted group. And honestly, even though I added many, many people to kind of fill up my uh, friends list in there in the game... I'm actually happy that I did. There was a lot of people that were added strictly for game purposes that I've retained just as, you know, Facebook friends. And I, I have a wide variety. Of, I have some that are on the opposite side of my belief structure and some that are very much entrenched on the same side of my belief structure. And it's been kind of fun. Now, obviously, your mobile game, you're not interacting quite the same way. You're just adding them for the game and everything, but I, I will say that was an interesting experience in Marvel Avengers Alliance. And if I could go back, I don't think I would change it. I think I'm plenty happy how it turned out. So, back to the game at hand. There's friends over there. You have quick PvP match over here where you can select your deck. I This looks like maybe that was live PvP with that waiting and everything maybe it's not like pv ai maybe it's actual live pvp now one of the only mobile games where i've seen live pvp is oz the broken kingdom it's the only one where i've actually seen that you go up against an actual real other player over here oh his power levels way higher than mine um This is going to be interesting. I have not actually played PvP like this yet. I wonder do you, if you click... Maybe it is... No, that's real. That's 
That's a typical Hearthstone countdown timer over there. One seventy to two seventy. All right, let's see. Ah, oh, I don't have enough. So the the basic premise of the game is kind of a uh, connect four type deal. Um, some people say tic tac toe. To me, it just reminds me of connect four. The pretty sneaky sis. So that was a good play by him. He blocked the three pack that I was setting up for by um, getting the kill. Now, one thing the game does not explain to you that you kind of have to um, find out for your own. Once something is on the field, you can actually um, manipulate it by moving where you want it to go, just like a uh, a checkers piece. And I didn't know that at first. I, I found that to be um, kind of surprising. Let's see. Ah, uh, I've got an arrow. I like arrows. Arrows are fun because... You get somebody who thinks they're going to block one of your connections and then you drop an arrow on it and then you put a piece exactly where you want it to be. I really like that sharpshooter arrow quite a lot. Uh, let's up the sound a little bit over here. So we'll drop that on Nick. And then we'll drop her here. Then we'll get an attack in. Alright, so that is the goal of the game, is to make connections like that. Time I got to do something. And bop the enemy agent when you make a connection. When you have um, space removal cards like I did with the sharpshooter arrow... They're really, really handy because you get somebody baited into blocking your connection and then you just get rid of them anyway. I can still do more. Ouch. Alright, so. He doesn't have anything that is particularly threatening right now by itself. Now he does. Oh, he's, he's got me here. He's got me in a good pinch. Really? I can play none of my cards? Oh, wow, this is awful. I've never seen this happen. Well, if I could play a card, he's got me in a pinch, because if I block here, he goes here. If I go here, he gets the diagonal. So he's, he's set me up pretty good over here, but I can't do anything. Um, yeah. If I had somebody on the field, I could move them for an attack, but I don't have any cards to play, and I don't know how to... Which card? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, didn't know I could do that either. Um, I'm gonna go here to block the diagonal just because it'll give me um, two stacks of dust. It's the better move that I can do right now. Weird. After summoning, let's see. Alright, let's put you here to block this. And let's see if maybe he'll take some people out. Not enough damage. We have to take it. Yep. Not done yet. That's a good play there, except it doesn't kill him. I'm in a decent position here to block some of his chains. 
I could go here next. Get that middle piece and block a couple chains that way. See, now because it cracked that particular panel, it's not usable this turn, so he can't put something there, which means it doesn't really change my plan a whole lot. And then you could do that. So, I can hit you again. so rather than place a card to set up a chain, he just moved it. That is probably one of the scariest implementations of Drax I've ever seen. That is... That is furious looking. I wonder how this game's matching is going to go, because, I mean, that guy had considerably more hit points than, than me over there. But, so, that's what a quick PvP match will look like, and you can see, you want to try to set your opponent up to basically where, uh, you know, you could do two things. Even if they block one thing, you've got another capability uh, out there. So they will occasionally balance cards. When they do that, if you have the card, it'll light up. But I don't always know if it tells you what the balance is. After summoning deal, 170 to 200 each to two enemies with smart missiles. Wow, that's... That's kind of scary looking over there. I have never seen this character. I was clicking on it thinking it was like maybe Venom for a second, but... It's kind of like... Baraka from Mortal Kombat mixed with Venom. Loki, Ghost Rider, Iron Monger. Hardly ever see this referenced in games anymore. Wasp, that Outrider Warrior, and a really rabid looking Rocket Raccoon. However, that is that same Bellhop outfit um, from Marvel Avengers Alliance, so that's cool to see come back. So you have a trial simulation over here. Um, challenge other players AI to feed up to five opponents every day to earn a massive amount of gold. That sounds pretty cool. So this is probably PV versus AI. PVP versus AI. We'll take a look at that. Spec Ops. Good to see. You're seeing a lot of common Marvel elements in this. So this is something that I have definitely... Um, gone through and I've even gone back and three starred them so when you play these you will have conditions that you need to meet defeat an opponent in two turns defeat an opponent leader with one or less battle line attack avoid opponent's battle line attack so some of these are not always easy to do on the first run but if you get one like say avoiding the battle line attack you can always go back and get the others you don't have to get all the stars um, on the exact same run, which is pretty cool. Mail. Diamondback has been reset to level 1 from 2. I don't know how often they mail you any goodies like some of the other games. Login rewards we've already seen. Challenge is over here, but seemingly grayed out or maybe not implemented yet card collection shows you your cards and it seems like they are in team categories which is pretty cool got a few defenders over here definitely quite a few shields and it looks like when you hit a certain amount of them you get diamonds which is pretty cool masters of mystic arts I, I didn't even know I had Wong I don't play this game daily uh, because I really only have it on one device right now and that's my Nox. But um, it's one that might be worth logging into daily, at least to collect your diamonds and then maybe, you know, start playing it after about a month. Who is Black Maria? I have never heard of this person. I, like, if I saw that, I'd be like, oh, is that from like the joke West Coast event or the Great Lakes Avengers or something? So here's Diamondback, who we've talked about before. That's a Luke Cage character, if I remember correctly. And I think he was in the Luke Cage show. It's been a while since I've watched the first season and still need to watch the second season. 
Foggy Nelson, and there was a reporter. So you have minion type ones in this too. Hell Carrier Strike is really a lot of fun. My Iron Man seems to be one of my best cards. Here's Lady Bullseye. It's kind of a scary looking character. Here's Misty Knight. Of course, we all know who she is. Although, that really does look like Beyonce from Goldmember. Nick Fury. This, like, I see this art here, and I just think this is, like, ridiculously anime. It's very detailed, but it just strikes me as ridiculously anime. That kind of looks like a Silent Hill nurse. Here's some shield units. Training humanoid. There's that sharpshooter arrow that we've been talking about. Got a little swordsman, and I have Typhoid Mary, who I would think that I've never heard of that character, to be honest. Yaka Arrows from original Yondu, not the more modern Yondu, but kind of how he used to look. And Wong, what's kind of cool about your cards is you can level them up, and they get more powerful. You have to, of course, I do believe the level up capabilities on it come from extra particles can be used to upgrade a card with not enough. Yeah, so you have to have some things towards it. You have to have those particles or you have to have duplicates of it. So it's kind of like when you shard something in other games, you, you have to have the gold and you have to have the shards um, from getting duplicates. You have Arena. And it looks like, after this loads up, ooh, I wasn't actually looking to jump into something. But okay, we'll, we'll do a quick little training over here. So rather than burn my gem in the first round, I'm going to go ahead and get out a non-gem character. If you notice in these cards over here, you see gems in the corner. That means you have a price to pay to put that card out on the field. And that is your gem level right here. If you don't have enough gems, you can't put the card out. You get gems by landing on these spots with the little like dust things. deal 600 damage um let's go ahead and get you here oh it's just an ability okay never mind i thought it was hawkeye um what are we gonna do i'm gonna put him here so it's very very interesting in this game how you have both getting gems to satisfy your summoning costs as something that you need to do but you also have of course the whole connect four thing now this is an interesting situation i'm in he could set up for a diagonal or he could set up for an across so what we want to do to lowest hit point enemy after summoning 160 to 180 so it'll go okay it'll break we want to do it here. So this is the uh, the tactical piece of this. If I put him here, I know he's going to attack this 80 guy. So this is no longer in danger, but the diagonal is. So we're going to put it here to block the diagonal. And take him out. And he's not going to go for the horizontal now. And I'm set up for a horizontal. So there is finally the AI showing you an actual attack movement. The game never really tells you about that. When you go through all of the training and everything, um, it never really explains that. So I think I will go here for this. So, I mean... This is probably one of the weakest Marvel titles I've ever played, uh, ever, you know, played. I've never tried the puzzle game, and I have never done the 
Tiny Avengers Academy or whatever that was. Um, so I don't know those, but of the games that I have played, and this is one of the weaker titles, but when you actually pay attention to it, same vertical line, 210, it, it, it does get in there. Like, there is some definite um, planning that you have to do, and it's not nearly as light level as you think. All right, so what I could do, the attack is 210. All right, I can move here. Uh, oh, that's right. It's not just the... They actually duke it out. Okay. See, I had forgotten about that. It's not just an attack and then the person dies. It is um, kind of like Magic the Gathering combat over there. It's an actual fight between the two pieces. See, again, the whole movement... They don't really go into that much detail on it. At least they didn't. Maybe the training is different now. <laughs> oh! It said AI has been added to my friends list. We have to go check that out. That is interesting. Because maybe now I can visit... AI for something? Oh, I can battle him. Alright, I was interested in seeing if, like, you get Marvel Avengers Alliance stuff from it. Like, where you got, uh resources and such. So the campaign mode is the, your standard chapters and everything like that. I think this game is perhaps getting better than we initially thought. This seems to be a little bit more fun. And if you just like Marvel games because you like Marvel characters, you're probably going to enjoy it. So let's look at the store over here. Starter offer for $5, 5 uncommon cards, 7 cards, 50 gems. I can't really pass judgment on these because I have not really ever delved into how good the real life currency, the gem, uh, real life money to gem currency conversion is. So you got your typical monthly package, you get 200 gems on purchase plus 30 for day for a month for 20 bucks. This maybe is not too bad, at least for the first month to see just how good it is. Special cards deal. You got a bunch of cards over here for 10 bucks. Uh, looks like that Baron Zemo one isn't too bad. The Doc Ock. So two Baron Zemos and a Doc Ock. And target an enemy. Radioactive warning. On every turn, until the target is knocked out, deal 150. That actually seems like a really fun ability. It's a little low damage. But it's going to keep going until they get knocked out, and it's got splash damage, which is pretty cool. You have a free daily offer that you want to hit up. And here's where you can spend some gold. Hydra Combat Troop, Colleen Wing, Skeletal Swordsman, Electro. So I got an Electro used against me. It was pretty good. Now, if I buy this Daredevil, which I will... I should be able to upgrade it. So now let's go to my cards. We'll go to Daredevil. So deal 210 to one enemy in the same vertical line, 390-390. We'll upgrade him for only 500 gold, which is not too bad. And he goes up to 231 and 429, 429. And still only costs the one gem. So this is why you want to upgrade your cards. Um, for only one gem, you get some pretty good use out of him. He's strong in both attack and hit points. And that 231 um, is a good way of, of clearing somebody out of there. So there you go, guys. There is um, Marvel Battle Lines. I don't know when it's going to come out yet, but, you know, for Android, device, Android devices, you could just Google, like, Marvel Battle Lines APK and find it. Probably find it on APK Pure or something like that. And it may just help tide you over until, say, Marvel Avengers Alliance shows up or, 
you know, if you're not liking Strike Force or you just want something a little bit different, there you go. Check it out. See everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video.